Hi, Abaro here. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to connect your Flutter app to MySQL Server Online. I have imported this HTTP package. As you can see in my prospect YAML here. And then as usual, I have this skeleton app with an app bar and a body. Okay, so in this video, we're going to use a future builder in our body here. We are going to create a method to fetch the results from the database and then we'll display it in our app here. The online server we're going to use will be triple zero web host. You can go ahead and sign up for free or log in if you already have an account. So I'm going to sign up for free and I'll be brought to this page. I'm going to fill in my email and my password and repeat the password. Okay, so I've been brought to this page which says they've sent me a confirmation email. So I'm going to open my mail and verify. You can see my mail, I've been sent this message to verify. I'm going to click this. Okay, so the email has been verified. I'm going to log in. Okay, so once you are done with the sign up, you will be brought to this page here. I'm going to click on this add and then give website name. I'm going to say Flutter My SQL. And then click on this create. Okay, so I'll be brought to this page here. What I want to do now is create a database. I'm going to click on this website manager and come down to this database manager. I have this here. I'm going to click on new database. And I'll be asked for a database name. I'm going to call it Flutter Server. And I'm going to hit Create. OK, so once this is done, I'm going to go here, hit Manage, and then go to PHP Admin. And then we have our database here. I'm going to open it. And then here, I'm going to create a new table, my app. Table. It's going to have three columns. Down here, the first one is going to be ID, heading, and then the last one will be body. For the heading, it's going to be larger with the length, let me say 250, and then the body, same. Okay, the ID is going to auto increment. I'm just going to go ahead and click. Okay, and then save. So once this is done, you'll be having this new table with these columns ID, heading, and then body. I'm going to go ahead and insert values into these columns. I'm going to go here. And then I'll fill it. Or better still, you can also go here and write the query. For my heading, I'm going to say and body. So I'm going to add more rows here. Okay. So once I'm done, I'm just going to go ahead and then hit go. This value should be inserted into my table. So the equivalent, you can just write out this query and then you achieve the same results. I'm going to go back to my table. And here you can see I have this ID, auto increment, headers, and then body. That will be it for now for here. Let's go back to the triple zero request panel. You can see we have this database name and then database user and then database host. We're going to use this database name and then database user and then local host to connect to this database in our Flutter app. And then to do that, we're going to write a PHP script. To write a PHP script, you can just go up here, go to file manager, and then come to upload files now. So 
So you are redirected to this page. And then in this page, you can add a new file, a folder. You can search through the icon, you can upload files. So if you want to add a file, you can just click this. And then you provide the name of the file. And then you create it. Okay, so that will create a file here. If you want to open it, you just click on it. And then click on this edit. You can also download the file. You can view the file, delete. For this tutorial, I'm not going to write our PHP script here. I'm going to go into VS Code and write it there. Okay, so back in VS Code, I'm going to go here. Okay, so inside here, create a folder, call it my DB. And inside this DB, I'm going to create a new file. So the file that I want to create now will be the file that will enable me to connect to the server. I'm going to call it connection PHP. Okay, so inside here, I'm going to open and close PHP tags. Then in here, I'm going to try to do something. And if there's an exception, I'll catch this exception and then do something. So in here, the type of exception I'm going to catch will be a PDO exception. I'm going to catch it as. In here, I'm going to make a variable for the connection. I'm going to call it connection. It's a new PDO. So you can use my score I connect, but then this PDO is more secured. So the first argument will be for host name and then the database name. And then the second one will be your database username. And the last one will be your password. So in order to get this, I'm gonna go back. What do I want? I want the database manager. Okay, you can see we have database name then database user and then host. Going back for the first part, we are going to say my SQL host should be equal to the local host. Local host. And then the next one in this first argument still will be DB name, the name of the database. This is the name of our database. Expand this. We're going to use this. For the second argument, we need to provide a database username. So coming back here, this is our DB username. Exit here. And then the password to the website when you're creating it. Okay. When you're done with that, we're going to say connection and set attribute. And then we're going to say PDO. ATTR underscore error mode. And then we we'll also say PDO error mode exception. So once we're able to connect successfully, we want to display something on the screen connected. Once if there's a problem whilst connecting, well, if there's a problem, we just want to come down here and say, show us the problem. We are taking the message out of it. And then we just want to kill the connection. But then after killing the connection, we also want to show a message that we couldn't connect to the database. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my server file manager upload files. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And once that's done, I'm going to upload a new file. In the lib folder, we have my DB. Okay, once it's chosen, just hit upload. Once it's here, you can go edit it from here. So right now, I'm going to go here and click view. Okay, and you can see I have an error on line 11 of my connection.php file. On 
Uh, and now here I can see I have this spelled wrongly. Let me check if I have any other thing wrong here. Okay, this is supposed to be semicolon. Let me save and uh, try to view this again. Okay, now I have another error. This is not defined. Okay, so I have this spelled wrongly. Remove this. Then save and close. Let me try to view this again. Okay, so you can see we have yes connected here. Now what I'm going to do is go back. Let me close this and close this as well and close this as well. So right now we have this script that helps us to connect to a database. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write another PHP script to help us fetch data from a database. So I'm going to go back again. So we don't need to really correct anything here because I've already uploaded this and edited it at the server side. So I'm going to go into this folder and still create another file for upload. I'm going to call it get data.php. I'm just putting this here just to upload them. It doesn't have to be here. You can just do everything at the server side. I just choose to keep them here. They don't affect your Flutter project in any way and don't contribute to the functionality here in any way. So like we did before, I'm going to open and close PHP tags. And then inside here, we are going to be needing this page, this page here in the new file we are going to be creating. So I'm going to say require connection.php. Okay, so right now what I want to do is write an SQL query to fetch this data. So I'm going to make a special variable called query and call it make query and set it equal to select all from then the table name. I'm going to make a statement and say connection and then prepare and then I'm going to prepare my query for execution and then after that I'll execute my statement. This is statement then execute it. Now that I've executed this query, it's going to return some results. And the results, I want to read it in JSON format. I'm going to go down here and create an array. Array. So after this, I'm going to look through all the data that will be retained and then push it into this array. So to do that, I'm going to use a while loop. In here, I'm going to create a new variable called results from. And then I'm going to assign the data that will be fetching from the statement to this results from. Down here in the body, I want to push it into an array. So I'm going to use array underscore push. So this array push method takes where you want to put the array. I'm going to say, I want to put it into my array. So just to differentiate, let me call this my array. And then the array you want to put inside. Remember, so this would be a JSON array. I'm going to say the method array. And then from the results here, we want to take the ID results from, we're taking the ID from the results and then assign it to this ID. We also want to take the heading and body. So now that we are done with putting this data in an array, we want to read this array in JSON format and then echo it. I'm going to say echo JSON encode. We're encoding an array and then my array. I'm going to save this and then go back 
to our online server. Here, we want to upload our file. It's here. Upload. Then we have this here. I'm going to check to see whether I have no issues. OK, so you can see we try to view this and then it has returned this yes for the connected part, which is in this file. Remember this file echoes connect when it's successful, returns the data that we want in this list. So now this is working. We're going to go into our Flutter app and try to read this data from there. I'm going to go in main dot that. We've already taken a look at the future builder. You can take a look at the previous tutorial on future builder to get a fair idea of what we are doing here. And I'm going to make it quick with this one. Okay, so I didn't put this in the right place. I'm gonna take this out of here. It's supposed to be here. That's if there's no error or something. So we have this problem here. I'm gonna create the method which will return the data from the database. I'm gonna say get method. This doesn't exist here, so I'm gonna go ahead and create it. It's gonna be a sync. This method will need a URL. I'll call it a URL. It's a string. And then the URL, we're going to get it from here. And then I'm going to say await HTTP dot get. And then we'll provide the URL. And then for the headers, Accept application JSON and then response body JSON dot decode. Now you can see we have this error with a JSON decode. That's because we've definitely not imported the, that convert. You can see the JSON error is gone. And then what we want to decode the body of the response down here i'm just going to return the response response body and then if i have no problem this should run fine and then you can see i have this error here so what i'm going to do is instead of just putting this url here i'm gonna cut it and say uri dot encode through and then put my url here and i need to restart this Okay, so I still have this error here, and I guess it's because of this. And then I guess I have to restart. I think it's because of the way I'm occurring the data. I'm bringing this before the results, which will definitely cause an error because it's not JSON data and can't be decoded. So I'm going back here to my connection.php file and then remove that echo statement from there.
then save and close. Okay, so there you go. Now we have this data returning. What I'm going to do, I'm going to print it in the console here so you can see. So what we want to do, instead of just returning this raw widget, I want to return this data here. So for the first one, for the heading, I'm going to say head and say snap. Remember this snap is snapshot of data at the current index in our list view builder. And then I want the head. And then I'll do the same for here. I want to take body. And then you can see now we are successfully taking the data into our app. Okay, so that'll wait for this tutorial. In the subsequent videos, we're going to learn how to connect our Flutter app to the local host. It's going to be just the same thing, just that this time around, it's going to be on our local computer. And then we're going to continue from there. Since we fetched the data here, we're going to continue, insert data into database, delete, and a whole bunch of stuff. So stay tuned. Do feel free to like and subscribe to my channel.